fast tempo and they can like snowball the game really hard if let's say they get like two or three pickoffs on this warlock and nature's profit with the bounty and the storm and storm's item timing gets you know that like escalates it can be really difficult and they could go for ember all right I'm guessing that's going to be Miracle playing Ember. Yeah, so holding on to that, you know. He's going to use that Fatal Bonds after the Troll ulti goes off. <laughs> we'll see if it comes into play this game. I'm really hoping it does, because that sounds absolutely hilarious. But uh, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll remain to be seen whether that is a strategy they can pull off. Alrighty, let's get into it. Game number two, it is Liquid versus Alliance here in the winner's bracket finals of the EU qualifiers for the Epicenter Major. Alliance, one game away from qualifying to a major. They've had a rough year so far, and this will be a huge break for them and show that they're finally making some progress towards the DPC titles. Meanwhile, Liquid, they want to be restored to their May. I mean, they were just in the grand finals, and yet they're down one game to Alliance. It's not a timeline we're used to seeing. But, uh, well, except if you look at the start of the year, Liquid did have a rough start to this DPC season, but now they seem to be refor reformed to their former glory, and uh, Alliance taking a couple of games off them. Quick pause to start things out, gives us a chance to analyze the lanes right now, so it looks towards uh, Storm versus Medusa in the middle lane. I believe this is slightly Medusa favored in this mid. Yeah, it, it should be. I think... Uh... Actually, the last time I saw the, this matchup, it was actually no one playing Storm Spirit, and he like destroyed that Medusa. So I'm not sure if that's like because it's a no one thing or <laughs> it's a it's a Storm thing. But yeah, if, like if we think logically, like Medusa drains some mana, he has like some rate bands, he has pretty good chances. It, it's just like Medusa just gonna push out the mid lane, get XP, and then go to the jungle, right? So yeah. But what's interesting for me is like this Enigma's item build is different. He has four clarity tangles. He's not give. He's not pulling that uh, ring of health. He's doing the ring of regen. So selfish. The more. Uh... <laughs> yeah, it's the downgrade, for sure. Can't it's actually so huge, like two HP versus six HP regen. Yeah, yeah, it is a big difference. But it kind of suggests that Enigma yeah. might be looking to get involved a little bit more in this bottom lane if he's got these tangos, looking to maybe take some harass damage and try to get some trades in. Yeah, and it seems like they're actually gonna change the lanes. Like they're gonna send the troll. It's, it's isn't it like so funny that Liquid have played like eleven straight games of aggro Chai lane. Begins. <laughs> it doesn't matter what heroes they have. They just let my control sit in the safe lane solo. They believe it's, it's like, better right it's now. Been their, it's been their strat. Yeah, I mean it's. I think it's better for their team, because they Liquid is this team where they need all three of their cores to be enabled. And they like to play like away from each other, the cores. So what's the best way to do that? Then like put your off laner in the safe lane where he can guarantee himself some experience no matter what. Then being off lane, giving free farm to the carry and being completely zoned out since the lane is a lot longer. Yeah, that seems to be the operating theory behind uh, behind Liquid strategies so far. And uh, we'll see what they can pull off with Miracle up here in the safe lane. Helped out by GH and Kuroki. Yeah, the... Warlock hasn't actually picked up a spell yet. Um, usually, I guess we start with a Shadow Word. That's what it used to be, where you can kind of heal people up and... Come on, <laughs> yeah, you definitely still start with Shadow Word. That, here, that, okay, that skill has a, a lot of value. I mean, you know, it's, be it's definitely better than Fatal Bonds or people, which are both pretty oh, useless. Yeah, what what just mm -hmm. So the Coddle, Coddle and the Troll are going bottom. They do have the lane that they want. Bounty Hunter skilled Invis, so he doesn't... Uh, get seen by any wards around the mid lane and he can go up to the top lane freely oh he's gonna go for the career he's he? no he's not he's just oh he's gonna go pull the next creep wave like yeah have you ever seen this the off laner pulling the lane from the <laughs> safe lane I, I i i have not this is the first no, time i haven't either he doesn't even need to attack a creep either he just waits for the uh, shadow walk to run off so yeah, and here's the Warlock. He is warding the Anima's jungle, but the Anima's actually jungling on the left side. So, geez, Alliance is like really far ahead in this game. Like in terms of, you know, what they wanted to... Oh, the creeps have ha have actually gone back. He didn't pull it all the way. He used this invis. Yeah, yeah, he tried to had to escape from uh, GH. He didn't want to take all that harass damage coming down the river. So, uh, yeah, they're trying to uh, lane up here. But look at the damage coming out of the box here. He shows himself for a second. And he's down to 50% HP to GH's right-click damage. And the uh, the shackles. It's, it's just too much for Boxy to handle. Yeah. You know, sometimes I'm thinking, like, what patch is Alliance playing on? Because look at Mickey. He has, like, three mangles. 
<laughs> yeah, this is old school. I, I, I have, yeah, and then they're playing like tiny Coddle and Weavers, like, they're, it, it's, it's so interesting that they're just playing like all these strategies from previous patches and it's working out really well for them. Yeah, same as uh, Kuro as well, playing the Warlock and then uh, just trying to run down this, this Troll Warlock. This is a completely different meta, but this is what, you know, it's really cool. Even in the qualifiers, you have your own little meta developing between all the different teams, uh, different heroes becoming stronger and everybody kind of just watching each other and trying to evaluate what's coming up next. Dyer's middle tower is under attack. So, right, now this Ember is just complete free farm. Bounty Hunter just got his first last so top lane is like... <laughs> Miracle is gonna have an amazing time up there. Mid lane, we're looking, we're talking about that matchup. It seems like Dusa really cannot deny many creeps against Storm Spirit. He can really secure all the last hits. And yeah, he's there. It's pretty even lane. It's not like the no one game at all. No one will smash in that Dusa. So, yep, just no one things. Uh, Kobe were unable yeah. to uh, replicate the same success, but uh, it's still going pretty well for him, to be honest. Uh, 14 and 2 Mickey for him, bottom was maybe not in his favor. Uh, yeah, Kuro dropping pretty low as Mickey is trying to chase him down here. He's going to have the axes for him, but doesn't want to chase under tower. Mickey not willing to risk giving up first blood, especially not against his Prophet. Never underestimate how much damage of Nature's Prophet can do, especially with this Blightstone in pocket. Yeah, and did you notice that the micro troll is actually level 25? Well, it's Nature's Profit. Yeah, that's, like, uh, that's a lot of profit he's been playing. Yeah, whenever I see players like this, it's just so intimidating. <laughs> oh, top lane, Bounty Hunter. Oh no, oh, we were looking at the medal. Well, nice Deep shout out there is uh, Boxy does actually get run down. There's a sentry, and uh, that's all it takes. One sentry, and they're able to get the kill onto the Bounty Hunter. Meanwhile, at mid, they're going on to Koikba here, but he's going for the TP out immediately. And there is no response. There's no stun available, so they'll be out. Yeah. This is kind of uh, concerning for the bounty hunter because typically, like, bounty is actually really good against. Keeps smacking them the way he is, and then uh, Ember is gonna like nonstop lose his gold. But since he has this head start in the lane, I wonder if he's gonna be able to be fine. But he does have the ring of health and the ring of reach, so he's sitting in lane with like 10 HP region because of the Enigma. Sees Insania in the river. Yeah, forces Insania to use his TP back to base there. Because, uh... You know, they tried to set up for the runes, and now Mind Control start looking for uh, Mikke as well. Harass him out of lane a little bit, whilst the, uh, whilst the Coddle is gone. Meanwhile, up at top, Boxy still just trying to uh, lane as best he can against GH and Miracle. It's such a high damage lane, it's very tricky for him to really just stay alive, but the creep wave's nice and close to his tower, which helps out a lot. So, be able to get a couple of creeps here, though. The Shackles come out. Miracle and GH, so they... No, this is just Harass. Bounty runes are coming up. So he comes up forward again, and uh, Boxy once again under these shackles does again get out. Well, it's close though. Yeah, miracle. He has so much HP regen. Though. He's completely fine. He's just burning all the mana uh, from Miracle and GH. Snatched from your grass. He's actually like recovered in this lane really well. He has even more experience than Miracle does. GH gets one bounty rune, bottom, Kuroki, and Micro. So they're gonna get. They're gonna get four bounties on Liquid side. Yeah, it does seem that way. All of them going over to Liquid. Gonna help them get a bit of a net, net worth advantage. Mid lane, mid lane. That's Ooh, it. They're going Level in. Koikva, no TP this time around. He's trying to get under the tower. The right click damage is coming through. The armor bonus from the tower. Helping out a little bit with the fairy fire as well. Mind control, he's not done. He needs another couple of clicks onto Koikva here and he will find them. Mind control runs him down. And I uh, guess that rotation was Koikva in the mid. Meanwhile, Miracle gets a kill, but now in trouble himself as Tiger rotates over with the Eidolons. And uh, quickly gets the return kill, which I'd say is very much worth it because I got himself 475 gold for that, which brings him pretty close to his uh, helm of the dominator. Well, he has it already. It's uh, it's on the, the bounty hunter, the ring of the rings. Oh right, <laughs> yeah, he's got it. And mid lane, easy. Yeah, mid lane, they're trying to apply some pressure with this catapult wave, and they're doing a pretty good job because they brought the coddle in, and it's take this tower is taking a lot of damage. The catapult still has full health, so. And meanwhile, warlock bottom getting dove. By Troll Warlord. Okay, and he's also right applying now. pressure bottom as well. So Alliance is doing a really good job because this Enigma got his Dominator, he's really fat, and uh, they've defended mid tower and they're also applying pressure bottom at the same time. Yeah, Even though they lost more bounty. Yeah. Here's Ty. Tiger's like so strong right now, and Miracle is like only level 5.5. He can't actually hold his tower. I mean, look at these last long. hits as well. If you kind of discount Tiger because he's been jungling, 
But either way, you've, you've got him still pretty farmed up. And then Quakeva right behind him, and then Mike right behind him as they go in deep. GH will be falling here. Tiger. Grabbing that. Take the mid tower. Miracle as well, there is Miracle looking at Boxy. I'm not really too sure. They're kind of just skirmishing a bit here. But Tiger gets the tower. He's he's just do, going to work in this top lane, and he's even going to be able to get some damage up onto this tier two as well. Catapult still alive and kicking. Nerdlon's happy to tank a bit of damage for that. Radiant structures are fought. Yeah, they use Glyph just for the tier two tower. That's pretty big. So now the tier tier ones on the other sides don't <laughs> that's, have that's Glyph cool. available to them. Both immediately swinging down to look at that bottom tower hanging around at about 500 HP. It's definitely going to be tempting. Not all it's going to be the first one to TP in for Alliance. Let's see if they actually go for it, but they're actually still hanging around at top. Miracle, not particularly healthy right now. GH backing him up, though. He's got plenty of disables to uh, hold back the forces of Alliance, but they're happy just to get as much damage on this tower as they can here. Actually getting it fairly low, considering it's 7 minutes 30 in, and uh, that's, a, that's a tier 2 tower taking a ton of HP. Yeah, my control is like 1 XP from having his level 6, so he's like sitting in base waiting to see where he can go next right now. And that was really impressive by Alliance, and like keep pressuring top even though it's like 6 minutes in the game. Because they know that nobody on Liquid side can actually come there. Oh, okay. Yeah. They got the level 6 on the NP now. Alright, a little bit, maybe a little bit of a misplay as Boxy's being chased around at top. Um, they actually used the dust on him here, but Boxy managed to avoid it. Be happy with that one. Just gonna sit there and steal Miracle's gold. I'm, I'm sure Miracle's pretty triggered by this right now. It, I mean, anybody is. Any carry plan against a bounty hunter just like keeps hitting me, and there's, there's nothing we can do about it. Meanwhile, Tiger finds Kuro again. Tiger is just an absolute monster this game, honestly. He's uh, probably leading the net worth. Yep, that's it. Leading the net worth chart. 3,700 gold ahead of Matu, even on the juicer. And uh, he's just been taking towers, finding objectives for his team, and do doing ridiculous amounts of work on this hero. Yeah, it's really impressive, actually, his start. Like, he's actually way higher level than... In. I wonder if it has something to do with the Enigma starting in the left side of the jungle, because he has more camps connected to each other. Where in the right camp, in the right in the right triangle, there's an ancient camp, so Enigma can't actually farm that. And maybe that's why he has uh, a lot more XP. But he also has three kills, so that also could be another reason why. Yeah, <laughs> it's, a, it's a fairly good factor. And Tower does get <laughs> oh, denied wow, again. <laughs> so Mind Control on the ball with these deniers, taking both these bottom towers down himself. But yeah. I mean, they still got the two towers with that. Like, that's very, very big if you're Alliance. You just open up a big part of the map. You can farm so much, and Liquid are going to feel so uncomfortable being in this bottom area where they don't have any towers to cover look at how my control is farming like do you see someone farming like that nine minutes in the game <laughs> no he's you really scared. don't like he's he's so scared for his life he's like running back and forth trying to fog people but there's like nobody there but the, it's the fact that two of their towers are dead they can't do anything about it so they're just gonna trade two bounties so I mean, normally whenever you're you're in these kinds of game and your bottom towers get taken and there's, there's a lot of pressure coming out, you're always pretty scared about getting ganked. With a bounty hunter in the game who's just at level 6, you are terrified of getting ganked. And this bottom lane becomes an yes. almost uninhabitable zone as uh, Matsu's kind of farming. They've got this Observer Ward here, but that's probably the only camps he's really going to be going for right now, unless he sees some heroes appearing on map. Yeah, Medusas typically don't like to go down there anyway. They just like to play in the triangle at these two camps. And that ward really helps them because he can hit the camp on the high ground there yes just yeah. from the low ground and he can bring it down and just farm both camps at the same time so he's very happy about that that ward is also helping uh, liquid like cover at least this small portion of their jungle so uh now they're trying to make some kind of play happen on liquid so they can like utilize their you know, team fighting heroes like they have all okay. this room, But they use the dust yeah. onto Bounty Hunter Tigers getting into position though. He could get two inside this black hole. He's uh, looking for it. He's got it set up and in he goes. Catch just one. No, no, my Kuro goes into it as well. And that's going to find the kill onto the Ember. And Kuro oh, shoots to follow. And two track kills go in the way of Boxy. A fantastic start to this Bounty Hunter's life. Wow. Kuro, Kuro was actually three experience away from hitting level six. 
Oh, oh uh, no. If, if, they, if they got that kill on the bounty hunter first and he got his ulti, they could have actually maybe turned that fight around. But because they killed those two heroes with the black gold, now uh, they could out, have pretty much lost the fight. walking onto the high ground here, but able to phase out of those snakes. Very useful as a snake. Oh, it's comes fine. In. <laughs> too many snakes for Foxy, but he is able to get himself away. Jeez. <laughs> Liquid is so mad right now. Look at the way that running out trying to kill people. They feel as if they're being suffocated because all the lanes are being pushed into them and they can't have enough disables to hold down any of alliances here. And they're also like uh like like mosquitoes, you know, this bounty hunter, even you dust him, he's so fast because of his movement speed. He just walks away from you. And he's pretty tanky as well. He's got like one thousand gold right now. So and this Coddle is just non-stop staying top, pushing out the lane. They can't actually take the top tower either, so they feel like they're not entirely sure what they should do with the other four heroes. Because the Medusa is just going to farm, right? But the four the four of the heroes on Liquid side, like, where can they make space? He's getting a lot for the time being, but how much is actually going to continue as, as we walk into this game? It's, it's just the advantage going more and more in Lance's favor. Natsu's going to need space. He's not going to be able to fight very soon. Yeah, they're really waiting for Alliance to like make some kind of mistake here where they can utilize this uh, Warlock's ultimate. Oh, Boxy, you're caught, bro. Yeah, oh, he tries to tango out, but everyone's there. That's one, one too many heroes. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Beating down Boxy, Miracle finds the kill, and uh, Liquid finally deal with that pesky Mosquito keeping coming in and stinging their heroes, but they catch him off guard. Yeah. All right, that's and you know, good for them. Ember Spirit, uh, the new uh, Ember Spirit build is like maxing Flame Guard and Slight, but Miracle actually opted to level up the Searing Chains because his lineup desperately needs that available, or else they're not going to be able to secure any kills on anyone. So top lane, the Coddle just still non-stop blasting. Are they going to catch him this time? Holy, oh, they actually got the sprout on him. Boxy's coming over, but... He's got all. he's got will always. Yeah, he's going to throw it down onto the three heroes here just to try and help himself survive, but he's actually blocked in by the trees. Beautiful blocking coming in, and with that cast, they should be able to finish off. Fatal Bomb's going to work. GH, though, he's dropping kind of low, but pops it does, turning it around onto the Bounty Hunter. He gets a hit, and yes, he does. Boxy getting in money, but then the Wrath of Nature comes whipping through, and Mind Control gets a kill onto the Bounty Hunter. But now now Liquid can start looking for this uh, top tier 1 tower. Meanwhile, Tiger takes yeah, I'm, I'm surprised nobody on Alliance actually TP'd for that because that was a really nice ulti by the... They had plus one. Maybe they would have been able to fight, but they could have been worried about the Warlock's uh, chaotic offering coming down. So they're just trying to avoid fighting into him. And you can see his skill build on Kuro. He maxed out the Fatal Bonds. Certainly did. You, you know what he's trying to do this game, don't you? Yeah, and also one thing about the Fatal Bonds is um, it's really good with the nature's uh, uh, rat. Teeping in here, they're looking onto Asani, but Mark can just run on top of him here. And there comes the uh, Warlock ulti, dropping down the golems, but it looks like it's going to be a they pretty clean disengage. They can't fight. See, the Shadow Word on Asani. Oops, Storm jumping in. Quickfer, he's ready to roll, but uh, GH is going to come in and turn him into a chicken, and now the shackles come down, but a black hole onto four heroes! That is very, very nice! This Mekke comes following up, the damage onto the juice. is it going to be enough though? He actually turns Mekke to some, but no! The Glaive comes flying in from the Bounty Hunter to finish the job, but now the Hex out onto Troll. Looks like Alliance might still be in some trouble. Troll, not out of the woods yet. He's actually killed, and Tiger trying to juke himself around here. Not quite happening though. In comes Bounty Hunter coming in from behind, seeing what he can find as the Shuriken come bouncing around onto three heroes, but the Hex comes out onto him, and Sanya doing his best to try and help out his teammate, but in come the damage from GH, and Boxy's gonna get finished off, and Insania just gallops his way behind the tower, but still being chased, Miracle, he's got the chains, mind control here as well, they're gonna make it a full five-man wipe, despite the four-man dream black hole, it wasn't enough, they didn't have the follow-up damage, and uh, Liquid just take advantage. Yeah, I was really curious, what was the storm doing, why did he zip in there, but then came the big four-man black hole, I think he wasn't able to get the midnight pop because he wanted all the heroes inside the hole, Yeah. and uh, they really lacked the, dam the follow-up damage to be able to kill the heroes in there, and this is the kind of like, you know, mistakes that Liquid were looking for to get themselves back in, and right now, they, I feel Liquid have, you know, got into a more commanding position, and the Medusa's farm wasn't even slowed down considering that she died there. 
she's still very very farmed and I think Alliance hurt themselves quite a bit uh, a little too trigger happy there well, Mind Control setting up for this uh, Orchid here Obviously, just, uh, throws a shuriken at Mind Control he said Mosquito just gnawing the hell out of Mind Control right now getting two points of uh, money stealing and uh, cancelling his TP once as well so Mind Control is seething in base right now Absolutely livid. So he's trying to hit some creeps in the lane. We'll take a uh, illuminate or two here from Insania. Not a big deal. He's got plenty of health to basically just face tank all of these. All right. So what kind of position does this now put Liquid in? Because Elias just went for a big fight, got a great black hole off, but still didn't take the fight, which was weird because they were pretty far ahead. We were feeling pretty good about Alliance until now. Oh, Storm going in deep. They're looking for somebody here. Will they have the damage to finish him off? No, Mind Control actually lives through this. They didn't have enough follow-up damage and the mech saves a day. And now the upheaval. Right, slowing them down. That's about all he can do then. Lance are able to escape as Boxy gets up onto the high ground. Looking maybe towards the middle lane. Yeah, Alliance have decided that it's not a really good idea for them to fight inside their safe lane. They should just try to make more proactive moves and play on the enemy side of the map so they can contain them better. And even if they do lose a team fight, it's not like Radiant Liquid can get any objectives off of that. So that's why they've gone back to the bottom lane, planted their two wards in that area and tried to farm up the key items that they need. Troll Whirler still doesn't have his Diffusal Blade that he's been trying to build for Dyer's some time now. He went for the Yasha Dyer's first instead. A lot of pings coming out here. They're picking up these uh, wards over by Roshan. Dyer's top tower is under attack. It's a very slow pace in the game right now as uh, we hit the 2k gold advantage for Dyer's Liquid. They've got their Medusa, so they're happy just this game to kind of fall off pacing wise for a little bit. Allow Madubman to get some creeps. Looking for the Scaddy next item. And meanwhile, Miracle, he's going in pretty deep here. The Long Alliance Hero is in for this one, but they're going to force him back to his Grand Storm, though, looking forwards. He's got Kuro inside the Electric Vortex inside here, backing up as well. Breaking down the cooldown, but oh my god, wow. Storm just dis appears liquid tear him a new one and insania he's not looking too healthy either as he's been run down by miracle making it look easy How, what, what, what was all that damage the golems the the slider fist everything just just came down on the storm gets instantly blown up yeah i mean the storm doesn't have a lot of hp and uh, he was sitting on intreds as well it's really hard for him to Dyer's fight there Oh, Kuroki. Oh, Kuro. Didn't get caught out kill. on the back lines here. Mikkei deep viewing this diffusal blade to get himself a kill onto the liquid support. Meanwhile, Miracle goes for TP out the time of a singular tree. No cancels available though, so he's going to be alright. Yeah, that golem. I mean, that was definitely a worth kill for them to get there and just push back into Alliance's uh, side of the map because Alliance kept sitting down in this bottom lane and just keep controlling and farming up you see that uh drawing from uh from miracle the map he just scribbles all over the top lane what do you expect he's saying from that uh i'm just gonna stay top guys just oh, don't come I'm here scared. something like that maybe <laughs> not sure meanwhile boxy and uh quick for able to find themselves a little sniper oh, they're, 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 they're well, looking for the medusa oh, wow. here they're even gonna commit the black hole for it mickey does have the damage to rip through him the superman is gonna fall Wow, so they nice. actually attacked two sides of the map at the same time. They were going on bottom and then they went straight for the Dusa farming the Ancients because she knows that 20 minutes when the bounty, after the bounty spawn and the neutral spawn, the Dusa is going to be there. Yeah, really, really good from Alliance, just taking fights at different spots in the map, trying to split things up a little bit and uh, divide the attention. Even with the black hole, they feel like they're not really as strong when it comes to team fighting, so they just kind of, uh, yeah, they don't, don't team fight, assassinate instead. Yeah, they, with, without the Warlock ulti up, uh, Alliance is very comfortable to keep on making these kind of moves. That, that ultimate is like the big key spell that's uh, really turning the tides for Liquid. I would say though, like as this game progress, if uh, Liquid farm at an even pace, their heroes are going to become much stronger than Alliance's in the late game.
Agreed. Especially yeah. with the Fatal Bonds. The Fatal Bonds is like a huge spell uh, in the late game, so. And Kuroki also has uh, Midas already up, so. They're, they're in a pretty good spot, even though the Dusa died there, and it feels like Alliance are always bringing back Liquid to their side of the map. They actually haven't broke high ground or got any game-breaking kills quite yet. Not yet, no. And uh, they're going to go for a smoke now, Liquid. They, uh... oh, accidental pop on the shrine. So the Warlock ult is up again, and they will just use that to smoke. Been used perfectly oh. twice now um, from from Kuro Radiant to be able to secure themselves some fights, and they want to use it perfectly again. Tiger wandering around this bottom lane, but they're actually pinging out Matu here. Tiger coming in, and there's a big zip coming in from Koikfer as well. They've got him inside the electric vortex. Does get a stone gaze off. So it frozen up for a little bit, but should be able to continue chasing Matu here very shortly. But there's an initiation round on the back lines as well. Liquid trying to jump onto Boxy. Boxy running himself out the wrath of nature, and the damage comes through from Liquid. They get the kill onto Boxy, and Boxy finds nothing. They try to go for the track kill onto Medusa, but unfortunately, it just ends up going badly for them. And still, yeah, the Medusa ulti remains. So they still have opportunities to make uh, more plays now on Liquid side. If they want to use the Ember Spirit and the Warlock together to go towards any lane. I'm guessing and this uh, plus 60% XP gain talent on the Warlock makes the Midas so much more valuable, right? Yeah. It's gonna be it's really nice. The levels. Yeah, he's got some yeah. really it's awesome actually... talents as well. I, I think, like, he's saving the Tome, right, for when he's 60, when he gets the uh, level 15 talent. I think it's the same, like, even if you use the Tome now, and then when you hit level 15, like, you're just gonna hit level 15 faster. Makes sense, right? Yeah, I don't know why he'd save it, but... I'm yeah. not Kuro, I'm sure he does. Meanwhile, they're jumping in, though, in the spirit. This is the Orchid reveal, and they're actually going to find themselves a kill. Miracle is not ready for that. Alliance gang up in the middle lane. Take themselves down an Ember Spirit. Yeah, he actually had Orchid earlier when they went out the... Uh, did he not? Oh, really? I mean, maybe he did. Uh, maybe he did, I'm not sure. But, yeah, if that's the first Orchid reveal, like, the Ember Spirit is going to have to change his item build now. Because he's going for the Radiance, but he can't really do that since he wants to split push and... Push his limits because anytime he shows on the map, if the storm zips in with Orchid, you're gonna die. You're gonna just go straight to a Roshan. And she just immediately silence up the native prophet and get on top of him, and it might well be a kill. But the hex comes in from the high ground, but it's not enough. Oh, Mickey, is he gonna? Shan <laughs> getting the bashes in, but he will be able to finish the job. Now running around with his Aegis, but uh, not much HP to speak off. Meanwhile, Quaker Shop finds another one onto GH, and Boxy's just chasing Matu back into the base, stealing his money. This guy's so <laughs> annoying. Mosquito. <laughs> yeah. Actually, that's what you call a game breaking death there. When the Ember died middle, and yes. they got that kill, then they went straight into a Roshan, and they also lost Shadow Shaman NP on top of that. And it seems like this game is going back and forth in terms of like who's coming out ahead. And Kuroki still haven't been able to use his uh, ulti for like, what, may almost five minutes now? Maybe six minutes or so? Yeah, the it's, next uh, yeah, really is about to come up. been in a great position to blow anybody up or turn a team fight around. It's just waiting. Patiently. Yeah, that means Alliance have adapted and like evolved into the situation where they're trying to avoid fighting into Liquid head on and they're like splitting them up on the map first and just picking them off in that way yeah when you have the vision of the bounty hunter you know those tracks and the storm for the long range initiation as well it's pretty easy to do that so it's more on liquid to try and bait alliance into these situations where they can turn it into a team fight and force alliance into engaging in them but honestly alliance might be okay with that right now they've got a bkb on the troll 10 seconds they've got an aegis as well the ability to fight is very strong alliance there's a smoke up from Liquid. Yeah, they, they want to take this fight. Marty's going to get popped here. I don't think much is going to come of this. I say that. They're actually chasing deep here. They're going on to Matu here. They've got the track off on Tim. Immediately purged off by the Mantle. But Koiko following up as well. He's got the Electric Vortex. As Mekka just starts to get these further stacks up onto Matu. And well, they've actually got Bounty Hunter locked down. The Ignis going to buy him a little bit of space as the ultimate be used. But he gets Stone Gazed up. The Stone Gazed up on Medusa means that Mekka can't really do much. Uh, he's still chasing here, Mekka. Not gonna find much for his efforts, and maybe could be in some trouble now as BKB wears out. He's got an Aegis, but uh, they need to try and find a way to fight this one. Meanwhile, Tiger still holding off on that black hole for the time being. He gets 
cancelled by the Maelstrom, but it looks like Troll Warlord will be losing his first life here, but in they go with the black hole. Three heroes once again, but Hex down does cancel it out, but is it too late? Down comes a golem, so still trying to fight it out. Mickey looking for a target, but he's actually just backing away, it looks like. Miracle comes in, they realize this fight is lost. Tiger and Quakeva both falling, and Troll manages to sneak away and TP out. Once again, oh, the black no. hole means nothing, and the golems mean everything. Warlock, absolutely. What a hero. What a hero. That was actually insane because uh, Ember, Ember was like baiting his body a lot and trying to force the lions to fight them, and they did, and he just bought back to secure the other kills for Liquid. And it was really important he did that because I feel Alliance was trying to like, you know, run away with this game and they couldn't really get the right fight. So he needed to do something drastic like that where he had to bait his own body and use buybacks. And it worked out because, you know, they killed four of Alliance heroes. They take the bottom tower and they're giving some more space to his Medusa now. And he still almost has his relic. So he's actually not changing his item build whatsoever. He's not gonna adapt to the Orchid from the Storm, he's just gonna still try to go for the Radiance. I mean, if he gets away with the Radiance and then he gets his item as well, this Ember Spirit is gonna be so unstoppable. It's it's really gonna hurt. I mean, he's, he's definitely gonna get his Radiance at some time soon. You've got the Lion's share of the money out the way, and uh, Lion's can to look for uh, something else. Is When it gets to late game, is it... Is, I mean, I'm sure it's not just completely over for Alliance, right? Like, it's, it's still going to be a very close game, I think, because you've got the Troll Warlord and the Storm Spirit, who does come into its own in late game a bit. Yeah, but Dire is uh, more reliant on their BKBs, so the longer right. the Troll Warlord uses his BKBs, it's going to be much more harder for them to fight. And the Warlock's Fatal Bonds, like, it's going to become stronger when the Ember Spirit gets his Radiance and Mjolnir and things like that. And they also have Dusa, Switch Shot, they have Nature's Prophet, Wrath of Nature. So at some point, if Alliance get like two or three heroes fatal bonded, it's going to be so difficult for them to team fight. They always have to retreat. Link Control just hanging out in the top lane. We're going to push it in a little bit. A team coming up behind him. Maybe it's a bit of a bait. But no one is interested from the side of Alliance. They see that, that tasty profit in the top lane and they do not want anything to do with him. Locating the honey trap and uh, moving over to a different lane. So the lane pushed in. Mid as well, they can start to get some damage on this tier 2 tower. There's no tower to push up at top except for the high ground, so no real threat to, uh, to Alliance, they view it as anyway. Middle yeah, Liquid have, uh, you know, avoided any clashes until this Warlock go ult is up again. And they're just trying to, like, push out one lane at least and help the Nature's Prophet. Because he can't actually do it by himself, right? He's always afraid of the Bounty Hunter and the Nature's Prophet. Yeah, and uh, so. even if, you know, sometimes in those situations, if you do die, then it's still worth it, but... In this particular situation, ooh, they're picking out Boxy. The dust comes out, it does connect, and they've got the Sprout as well. Long range Boxy beats through it immediately <laughs> and uses those drums. Plays those bongos, gets himself. Mosquito. Mosquito, Dota. <laughs> <laughs> Just has Quelling Blade, drums, gets double dusted, doesn't care, walks away. Jeez. It's like, but the problem is, like, this Bounty Hunter, you know, he's not that farmed. Even though he was, he's the position 3, right? And the Enigma was actually the support. I mean, He's, and he was really but, pulling his weight. Yeah, I was going to say, Tygo has always been ahead on net worth the entire game. I don't think there's been a single point where Bounty's been ahead. Maybe after that big engagement when they got a bunch of kills and the track gold and such, yeah. but I don't think so. Tiger has always been It's big. just hard. Yeah, he hasn't been able to get that uh, track kills that he's been looking for. But Liquid, they just hit a big timing. The Radiance is up, and they've got the Chaotic oh. Offering. Oh man, the, like heroes are going to melt. Oh, big Mosquito plays. Well, he got the courier. Got the courier. Yep. He beat himself away to safety. All right, well, uh, dies on the return there, so didn't actually uh, lose anything of value from it, but still going to be a little bit of time where heroes having to TP back to base for their items. Always annoying, but a bit of gold for the team as well. So now if there's a Fatal Bonds out and Ember just sees one slight, everybody's going to melt so fast. Radiance and Maelstrom up. Yeah, really just uh, going all in on this whole spread damage, damage thing, aren't they? Yeah, you're gonna watch this next fight. And li and look at Kuro, he's actually about to hit Lion. He's got the next tome ready. And who's gonna bring that back for him? GH. Uh, I wonder if he actually hits level 20. No, he's gonna be like level 19. 
right away. I thought he's, yeah, he's not gonna have level 20, is he? Then he's gonna have the summon golem on death, that's Hello. really big as well. Oh yeah, I forgot about Almost the, uh, <laughs> the XP gain, yeah, that's a huge amount actually. Almost to 19, but they actually just jumped oh, straight in. Him. All the way, they found Kuro here Dude. with the track. He does have five back. Certainly gonna be an option, and they might want to consider here. It quickly actually used the BKB for that jump as well. The tower is down. Uh, one more outer tower left for Team Liquid. Alliance still holding this gold lead. And that was a very big kill. I'm just talking about you. I like the way he's just sitting here, kind of like, you know, peacefully buying his tome, organizing his ventry, checking his XP, and then BAM! Storm on his face, track up, and dead in seconds. The orbital strike cannon of Alliance fires off. Yeah, it's uh, that was like the best pick that Alliance can make as well. I mean, you know, Crow is pretty high level, but it's also like a double edged sword, right? So when he dies and he's a position five, he's gonna be dead for a very long time. Talking of high levels, uh, how come Mickey is only almost level 25? Yeah, the guy's just farming, man. He's like, uh, he's playing Farmville here, he hasn't stopped, he's higher net worth than the Dusa. That really doesn't happen very stuff. often either. Yeah, very curious as he's actually gone for this Diffusal Blade build. I mean, they're more or less neck and neck, about 500 gold between them. But he's gone for a much yeah. more fight oriented build here on Mickey, so really kind of surprised. Yeah, this guy. Yeah, he's very good at playing this hero. I've seen him play a few times. And this build is like the best to fight against the Dusa. So even you do get frozen, you're not frozen for a very long because of the status resistance. And the Diffusal Blade is like the best damage output you can put onto the Dusa. And I is going for the MKB. The Dusa has Butterfly already. Like, she will die. The Dusa will die if they get her alone somewhere. The problem is, like, Alliance can't actually take a team fight unless they kill the Warlock first. Yeah. And, and when the Warlock... Yeah. And when the Warlock does hit level 20, and he has to summon Golem on death, when he dies, they're gonna be stunned for a while, where, like, Liquid can always look to try and help... Uh help Kuroki when he gets gone on. Yeah, he's got the two braces. We're actually bringing him up to a fairly impressive 2,100 HP. Um, a lot more than I would have thought. So he's just trying to keep himself alive as much as possible. And, uh, I mean, pretty soon he's going to get that level 20, which, you know, summon a golem on death or shadow word AoE. Hmm, which one do you go for, 1437? Uh... Oh, the level 20 one? Yeah, definitely <laughs> just golem on death. Yeah, definitely the golem that bit of a cap. I mean, the shadow word AO, the shadow word AOE is pretty good at like pushing our lanes. I I've seen it before, it's really really strong. But like in this kind of game where they're always looking for you, you're definitely gonna get the golem on death just for that mini stun, so the ember spirit can just zip in and just kill someone instantly. Absolutely, and, uh, messing up the storm spirit as well. If he can't dodge that stun, then he's gonna be in real deep trouble, and you don't want to throw down your storm spirit in order to kill a. Uh... A warlock, so it's a real big threat as Liquid are into the Roche pit right now. Mikkei leading the charge. He's not afraid of. Oh, there goes his mana. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this, this is a problem. Oh, okay. Thanks, Cottle. Cottle. Cottle's got you. Alright, alright. Cottle's got you. The Eidolon's not lasting particularly long here. Mikkei throwing in the defusal onto Matu here, just chunking away at his mana, but the evasion. Okay, this is actually the majority of those shots from Mikkei. Yeah, this Roshan is everything right now. For both teams, they so, whoever guesses Aegis is gonna be the, the aggressor after that. So they really don't want to give this Dusa Aegis, that's for sure. No, they do not. No, they do not. Uh, Mickey once again just coming in to smash into Mazu as mana. much as possible. Hex comes out, but he's got this Satanic S and Y build, so it barely lasts any time whatsoever. And uh, no, Mickey looks. Mirko would just clear bottom. Oh, he's actually committing into this. Okay. They're not afraid into Roche Pit. He's got the Ignis to kind of back him up, and Matu doesn't actually have a BKB, but they have to be really careful, because Roshan is low. So uh, Matu takes it very clearly. Oh, oh who's just on the backline? They actually catch the Bounty Hunter off guard here, but Storm comes ripping through, trying to bring down the GH. Will be able to do so. He's going to be the first catch of the fight, but buys back immediately. Well, we're still looking for more, but this BKB is starting to run off. He's got to get himself down to the low ground. Signs out onto Mikke as well, means that he's going to have to run. And Matu just straight into the pit whilst they're kept at bay. Mikke, though, he needs to find a way into this one. Tiger, he's got a black hole and a refresher orb. 
might be tempted to go for this right now. They need to get in sometime soon. In goes Tiger. He's got the refresher off. He's going to throw it down, but immediate golem right on top of his face. He's just going to get annihilated by that one. Matu takes Roshan, takes the Aegis, takes Tiger. And Mikkei's probably going to die as well. He goes managed to pop the ultimate, but uh, he's pretty kind of locked down here, just trying to get a bit of damage off. But GH going to control him up for a couple of seconds, but down he will fall. Mikkei is dead, and it's a bit of a chaotic situation for Alliance. That's the Warlock, Warlock God right there. Yeah. I mean, they definitely should have thought about like sacking that Roshan because Storm doesn't have any mana and they really cannot contest it, but they put so much value into it. They just went in. So, um, and the Refresher is also on cooldown. Yeah, why did he use the Refresher? He, he blinked in, Refresher orb and then I, Black Hold. He already I had the think he just game. messed up. Yeah. Uh, yeah, you know? Chubby fingers, you know? Chubby fingers. It I happens sometimes. Feeling. I know that feeling, yeah. yeah. This happens sometimes. Dyer's middle oh, Boxy. He's under looking attack. for a courier, and he's going to find one with yeah. the whole Dragon Lance. I mean, it, so. Liquid might just win the game right now because there's no black hole for a very long time. If they saw that the refresher is ready, so they're just going to walk high ground. They have the Aegis, and they have all the damage they need. They don't even need this chaotic offering anymore. Okay, so they don't they don't get the glyph the the creep wave, so it's going to be delayed. There's no more creeps after this, so they're not going to win the game per se right now but yeah, they can see if they can get some picks uh, see, see storm another mosquito hero right now <laughs> so you're, uh, you're you're really forcing this phrase in here but i like it i think it works. it's like it, it's like alliance's strategy you know you just have some mosquito -ish heroes here and there and just you know play the game out eventually your opponent's gonna get annoyed oh here's the creep wave until yeah, yeah, finally gets fight. in and Storm says goodbye, although a bit of a misplay as they blast them out, keeping two of them alive. And Sai's gonna have to clear them off with the Illuminate. But the good thing is, Storm's not actually using his uh, TPs for this. Uh, GH? Oh my god, Boxy's actually in. He's got a BKB and he's just clearing up heroes. They're not dealing with G a Boxy at all here. Well, Kuro's had to run himself out as well. Yeah, at this point, uh, Liquid doesn't know if the Enigma's Black Hole is up or not. Most likely, of course, they don't have a timer on it. So they're just going to um, try to retreat from this fight. Oh, the golem's gonna drop one. Is that they're gonna kill Koikma if he commits? So he actually might just die anyway. Oh, that was a really clutch, really clutch. Uh... Koikma is still going down all the same. The Ignis, they're gonna catch him right on the edge. Do they have the damage to keep no, him inside though? No, they don't actually have any lockdown. Mikay sitting on the front lines might need to get himself back here. Science comes out, doesn't last too long, thanks out stairs resistance to keep on running himself away. And maybe turn around if he wants to, the black hole comes in, lands onto two huge targets, Miracle and Matu trapped inside, Mikkei doing the damage, one goes one, down goes two, Aegis is popped, Mind Control trying to hang around the outside of this fight, but they know who they want, and it is Matu here, he's going to pop that stone gaze and force out himself around a little bit here, he's actually trying to just bash it into Tiger. Now going for the TP out, they don't have oh, any cancel! Oh, that was really nice play by Ma today. I, I was so sure that he was probably going to die there as well, but uh, Alliance had to like chase away the other heroes first before they can kill the Medusa again. If only there was like a chakra or something on that Enigma so he could have malified the Medusa again. Akato was nowhere to be found that time. That was actually really impressive by Alliance because I think the Black Hole just came off cooldown and Liquid kind of like, you know, lost track that, oh, yeah, the Enigma Black Hole might be up already and then they just get punished. They lost the Aegis and they lost the Ember Spirit. That's really important that they lose the Aegis because the Aegis is the way that uh, Liquid can go high ground. So for them to go high ground again, they need to like either wipe all of Alliance or need to get the next Roshan. So this game's going to be delayed. A bit more. But yeah, it's a glimmer of hope for Alliance, and they are a little bit further ahead as well. I'm fairly um, confident at this stage, but you still have to remember Medusa plus high ground plus late game. It's a very difficult equation for Alliance to figure out. Yeah, it's so funny. Kuroki just revived, and he's like a position five. <laughs> it's such a hard life when you're so high level, then you don't have that many actually he has quite a few items huh but his net worth is like really? the midas yeah so exactly. it's not really he's, he's got the midas and the ghost scepter um yeah. was going for a glimmer at some stage but um changed his mind oh glimmer glimmer or would be definitely very good but he went for the ghost scepter since there's a bounty hunter and yeah, they all just beaking so and trying to hit him fight every time yeah normally in most games glimmer is the correct choice because it helps your teammates a lot 
right. and it does a lot of magic damage. But in this kind of game, like once now that they have all their BKBs uh, and they're gonna run into you, the Ghost Scepter will buy you a lot more time. And it's also gonna delay the enemy's BKB. When the Storm zips in, he has to commit BKB, right, to try and kill the Warlock. So when he clicks that Ghost Scepter, that's like four seconds, the Storm cannot do anything. And his BKB will be running out. One thing to know really right now is that Storm has an Arcane Rune bottle. This uh, could lead to a fairly nice fight from Alliance, but again, they still really don't feel confident taking fights on any kind of terms here with these uh, this Chaotic Offering. Just a ton of, of AoE damage coming out from Liquid, which Alliance just aren't really sure they can fight into. They, they have the advantage, but it's really weird to see a team of the Bounty Hunter being so hesitant to actually going for engagement. Yeah, it's like when in no in Dota normally at this late in the game everything to the Roshan. So if there's no oh wow 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 Koikva, what are you doing going there, buddy? In deep, he tried going to zip in, in for really the deep. He, he went in for the creep wave, but and he was TPing out, but he didn't time it properly. Then GH just blinked in and caught him. Um, heads That's up huge. play from GH, but a uh, big mistake from Koikva as well. Can't really take that away. So she's the Roshan. Huge, up. huge mistake. Yeah, Roshan's actually yeah. coming up soon enough for it to matter, particularly. Although the lines are drawn, would, middle and top. They might try to force a uh, high ground play here, because they don't know if like the Storm has buyback or not, right? So they want to test it. They want to at least like force him to buyback. And they have Warlock ulti up, so they could think about doing it. The only thing that can stop, like, that will stop them from doing that is if they're close to some items on their heroes. And Medusa does look Dyer's like she's really close to her Daedalus and level 25. Ember's got 3k gold. So they got some really big items coming through pretty soon. This NP also has a 4.5k go. They're just gonna kill the shrines during this time. Yeah, get back. Alliance, force the lines back into their base, doing everything they can. There's a shadow blade on Taiga now. That's interesting. He's really, really trying to look for these big black holes this game. Taiga, feeling the momentum. Storm. Only 20 seconds left until he's back into this one, so... Pretty painful to watch all the racks being attacked and there is no response. Oh, Mr. Mosquito! He got caught! Oh, meanwhile though, deep into the base and Sanya's being chased by Miracle with that BKB and they're gonna bring him down, but also Boxy having to pop his own BKB. But this one is not really getting out. The right-click damage from GH, Mind Control, and Kuroki. I mean, they don't have a lot between them, but they will finally bring down Boxy. Okay, so the Storm didn't buy back. And now his two teammates who didn't have buyback just died. So they're in a really bad spot now. Yeah, on out of the frying pan into the fire for Alliance. Yeah. Top lane and off, all off of one big mistake like that. And we know that Liquid's 5v5 fight is already stronger, but now they're fighting 3 versus 5, so... <laughs> Definitely stronger. Mass not adding up right now. Just just waiting attack. for these creeps to come in. Quick for gonna try his best to destroy them here, I get. But uh, there's two lanes, you can't destroy two at once. And Miracle's actually guarding this middle lane, so make sure it comes in. So they just have to wave goodbye to their top racks here. Still 40 seconds until the bounty hunter comes back. This might just be Liquid ending it. Russia's up in 20. Silence out okay. on to Mikkei here. Mikkei, he's in some trouble. Pops the same. Nanaka just starts hitting trees, trying to keep himself alive. Oh, yeah, the Hex comes out. No mana. Gonna hold him back, and there's no chance no for him mana. to get back to base. He does have the buyback. Tiger sitting inside the Shadow Blade right now. Stun out onto the Ember Spirit. Mikkei coming forward. The tier 4 is being beaten down. 15 seconds until the Bounty Hunter's back. Got themselves a little bit of time. Liquid. They're not willing to leave the base quite that easily as Mikkei comes running forward. On to Matu here again, getting silenced up. Trying to net the real Matu here as the Storm comes blinking around. Now the Hex comes out, four staff back. They're just keeping Mikkei nice and safe. They need to deal with these creeps which are kind of hitting their base right now, Alliance. They are holding a little bit longer. Yeah, at least they held. I mean, they had to use the buyback control. Like, their Alliance was up 8k gold. And now Liquid's up 8k gold. So that's a 16,000 gold difference that they just built. <laughs> this graph is crazy. This graph is absolutely yeah, And they're going to secure four bounty runes as well. The seeds of yep. Make, Make it even more than 16k school. gold, in fact, uh, yeah, much, much higher, especially with Roshan being up as well. I don't think Liquid will hesitate to take this, although Alliance aren't pushing their way forwards. They seem to believe that there's a Rosh attempt going on here. Boxy, pinging out, pinging out Roshan. Are they really 
gonna be able to sneak this one. I mean, the lions are getting Roshan really low. Liquid. <laughs> the chance are not going Liquid. in. Quid. Quaver, don't go out the pit. He's oh, not doing it. They're going for the bounty hunter. Jumps himself up. They're looking for the bounty hunter, but Storm's coming in to try and help him out. They're just trying to distract though. Rosh Roshan oh, is being Roshan. taken. Mickey, Why get back into the pit. He's always getting out of the pit. There we go. Gets back in. But it's off Roshan, and that's going to be a refresher shard for Tiger. So three black holes if they really need it. And now they TP back to base. I can't believe they got away with that one, meanwhile. Oh, point control actually going on to Tiger here, but Murky is riding top of Tiger, but I'm not sure you want to go for this with the whole of Liquid Ink coming in from behind. He's going to have to pop the ultimate, trying to chop up anybody he can find here, but they're balancing the aggro beautifully. Mickey can't find the right target. Now with that BKB going down, he's probably going to be in some trouble. Aegis is available, and Sanya coming in to try and save the day. Oh, Wisp is on cooldown after that little engagement there. He's also got himself a Hex, by the way. Sanya's been farming up so much. Just uh, Force Hex, easy peasy. Yeah, he's got that cast range talent as well, so it's going to be pretty easy for him to just use that on the Ember Spirit if he ever goes in without the BKB up. It's a really long cast range on that Hex. So they have uh, Alliance of a win condition now. If they can somehow kill the Shadow Shaman. Um, okay, bottom lane. Nature's Prophet. That could be two win conditions if they <laughs> make this Nature's Prophet buyback. I mean, same for Liquid, right? We already know Liquid... Their win condition is the Troll Warlord, but he's got an Aegis now. And uh, now two heroes on Liquid have died. So let's see if Alliance can push out these lanes fast enough to go look for more plays. It's, it's not very fast. I'm not gonna lie, Theban. It's, it's, it's pretty slow. Yeah. They're trying to get these lanes out. Yeah, right. but, yeah still 53 seconds on the Prophet. Uh, it's not like he has a uh, battle fury on the troll either, so yeah. Is Enigma level twenty five? No, he's not. He's only twenty two. If he gets to twenty five and he gets the demonic conversion talent, like it's really, uh, it's really good. Oh, Boxy, hello. Yeah, Are they gonna for... start the fight? Oh, they just want the rune. No, oh, they got the arcane rune. Look at the bait there. Right, that's Boxy huge. Hanging out in a really nice position, but yeah, double runes up on Miracle right now. You do not want to come near this guy. Sly fist. It's uh gonna be pretty quick. The charge is restoring and the double damage rune. But uh, Lions are actually going in on this. They're looking at Kuro here. Kuro, he's got Sans up. He's got the Agonims, but he might not even get a chance to use his ultimate. Can they bring him down in time? They need to just finish him off before he can get off. Yes, they will be able to do so. But meanwhile, Mikke controlled up. He has got the Aegis, which he'll be able to use now as Boxy. Tiger. Running forwards. GH, well, they're just looking for the backlines, but Miracle with the double damage rune just tearing its heroes in the back hole. Lasts about two seconds before Tiger dies. Liquid find themselves three. And they're looking for more as well. Mind control will not be no, able to grab back, another one, though. That's no costly. buyback on the Enigma. I mean, that was like a 0.2 second black hole because the last hit from the Dusa before the black hole hit was a crit. And it landed on the Enigma after he got the black hole off. So he actually just died right there. And now it's going to be a really big uphill battle here for Alliance. Four versus five. No Enigma available. The one kind of saving grace that they had in these team fights. Mickey actually could just control up on the front lines. I'm fairly sure he doesn't have, have buyback. He doesn't have buyback. He's, he doesn't have ultimate either. He's just got to stay away. The golem's still chasing. Meanwhile, Storm playing around a little bit here. He needs to get off. He's got oh, no mana. He's got no out. life. 120 seconds. I'm fairly sure that this game is over right now. Troll trying to come in. Troll trying to do something. But the golems, the heroes, it's all just coming down on the ancient right now. And they will get it blown up. Liquid, they take Alliance's throne and bring this game to a third match.